If you've watched almost any creative YouTube channel, then you've almost certainly seen one of these. This is the Logitech MX Master 3 S. So why are so many people using this mouse? Well, the way that this mouse works is it comes with this software called Logitech Options Plus that allows you to build and customize what it refers to as gesture commands. This basically means that for each button, you can assign a command either to just a click or a click combined with a swipe in one of four directions. So for each button, you can assign up to five commands. But not only can you do this, but you can also create different command sets depending on the program you're working in. This makes this mouse the ultimate time-saving tool. In this tutorial, I want to talk you through the set of commands that I've put together for ultimate efficiency in Premiere Pro. Now here we are in Premiere Pro. Now to start off simply, a click of the back button, I've just assigned this to be the space bar, so play and pause. Now a click of the back button and a swipe to the right, I've done as the L command, which basically speeds it up to about 1.5 times speed, which is often how I quite like to view the timeline. And then similarly, a click of the back button and a swipe to the left, I've done as the J command, which is basically rewind. Now a click of the back button and a swipe up will be the down button, which will take you to the start of the next clip. And then a press of the down button and a back command will be the up key, which takes you back to the beginning of the previous clip. I find this to be a very efficient way to navigate the timeline. Now, the forwards button, I don't have any gesture commands associated with this because the way I do it, it doesn't work with gesture commands. So I have this assigned as just Alt. So I can hold Alt in order to scroll in and out of the timeline like that. Now, for the central wheel, I have gesture commands associated with this. So first of all, a simple click is the V button, which brings me up to the selection tool. As I'm playing, a click of the central button and a swipe to the right is Shift L, which incrementally increases the speed by small amounts. One of my favorite commands is a click of the central button and a swipe to the left, which brings up the track selection tool. And this allows me to basically move everything on the timeline to the right of the point that I select from, forwards or backwards, which I find to be incredibly useful. Now moving on to the thumb press button, I have a simple click of this being the C command, which brings up the cut tool. Once I've cut something, I'll then select it and I do a thumb press and a swipe to the left to do a ripple delete to move everything backwards. Or I do a thumb press and a swipe to the right just to do a standard delete leaving the gap. Now if I decide I don't like that change, I want to go back. A thumb press and down is simply the premier undo button. And then if I decide actually I rather did like that change, a thumb press and forwards is the premier redo button. Now you don't have to program these in as key commands. The software does actually contain some predetermined Premiere functionalities like Premiere Redo or Premiere Undo. Now, the Shift Wheel Mode button here is what this does is this alternates the central wheel in terms of how it ratchets. So if you click it once, it can go into sort of like a free spinning mode. And if you click it again, it goes into this kind of more ratcheted turning motion. Now, this isn't purely mechanical within the mouse. You can actually turn this feature on and off in the software if you want to apply another command to it. So I don't really use a free spinning wheel. So I've set this to be a special command, which is shift click. So quite often I might have multiple layers uh, placed over one another. So if I want to do a cut to all of them, for instance, you can do a shift click cut simply by pressing that one button like that. And then you can cut every layer at once. And lastly, the thumb wheel. I've enabled a setting within the software that this is inverted. So when I scroll upwards, I go to the right on the timeline, and when I scroll downwards, I go to the left. That's just a personal preference. So that concludes all the commands that I've got set up. Now, of course, I've been working with this configuration for years, so it just feels like second nature to me. But you, of course, may want to have a play with the software and come up with your own. If you want a quick summary of everything that I've discussed in this video, then I've put it in a table down in the description. And if you want to pick up your own version of the mouse as well, then please do consider using the affiliate link down there as well. It really helps out the channel. Thanks.